And the day's relationship between the Padres and area high school teams didn't stop at Coach of the Year. After the Friars took on the Braves, the best prep baseball players from San Diego took part in a home run derby and an all-star game. With UB head football coach Lance Leipold, the spring game set to kick off later tonight. Welcome back to Buffalo Kickoff Live. It's time for our roundtable segment. Josh and Thatter in Orchard Park and Scott Petoniak joins us here in studio. Well, coming into this season, all eyes were on Cheektowaga senior Dom Welch, who reached 1,000 career points two years ago and 2,000 points in December. I chatted with Welch a few weeks ago about his quest to become the area's all-time leading scorer, but tracking down the man who holds that title took this in a completely different direction. The Buffalo Bills continuing their tradition of their rookie tour where they take the newest members of the team all over western New York. The Bills deciding to hold one more practice here at home in Orchard Park before heading out to the west coast. Every head coach has a different philosophy when it comes to practicing and traveling multiple time zones. McDermott said his decision making dates back to his days with Andy Reid. When the full slate of games actually gets underway on Thursday, the first game will be right here in Buffalo when 12 seeded Princeton faces the 5 seed Notre Dame. Tip off is set for 12 15. And you can watch it on News 4. Reporting from Key Bank Center, Shannon Shepard, News 4 Sports. Well, a couple of familiar faces will not suit up for the Bills this weekend. Cordy Glenn, Mike Tolbert, and John Miller are all not playing. And a core group of receivers, Charles Clay, Jordan Matthews, and Kelvin Benjamin, are all listed as questionable. Well, there's a lot of ties between Chiefs head coach Andy Reid and this Bills team coming this weekend. For starters, John McDermott got his start coaching under the Andy Reid regime. He stayed with the Eagles until his tenure with the Panthers. And LaShawn McCoy is no stranger to Reid. Those two go back to his very first days in the NFL. The well, Sabres were at home tonight hosting the Oilers. They're desperate to snap a seven-game losing streak. After a scoreless first, Jacob Josephson working hard for this goal on the second chance. He finds the back of the net. It was 1-0. In the third, they would add some insurance for the Jack Eichel breakaway. It slips right past the right side. The Sabres finally get a win. 3-1 was the final. A big day in Amherst for the Bulls as they hosted Ohio. A win in their final game would make them bowl eligible. First half of this one, Tyree Jackson to Anthony Johnson. 54 yards and the points. The Bulls are up 24-10 at the half. They didn't score the rest of the game until there was eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Emmanuel Reed punched it in from a yard out. The Bulls hold on and win this one 31-24. They're going bowling for the first time since 2013. We'll have to wait and see who they're going to play. It's a big weekend for Section 6 in Syracuse. An astonishing three teams from our area were playing for state titles this weekend inside the Carrier Dome. Class AA Lancaster will go at it on Sunday against Troy. In the Class A matchup, Matt Myers in West Seneca West against Yorktown from Section 1. First half, Brian Ball scores from a yard out. West was up 7 0, and it stayed that way until the fourth quarter. The Indians able to play great defense, and then they put this one away late in the game. Myers did the honors, and what a story he's had, transferring from time and then leading his neighborhood team to a state title and a perfect season. In Class D, Maple Grove was facing Cambridge. This was a rematch of last year's championship game. Fourth quarter, the Red Dragons trailing by 12, and a heads-up play by Easton Tanner pulling off the interception and takes it to the end zone. That cut the lead to five. But Maple Grove couldn't complete the comeback. Cambridge had an answer right after that score. They lost 26 to 14. Just congratulations to all the teams in our area. And Lancaster on Sunday making it to the Carrier Dome is something to be proud of, and they'll remember that. Forever. So much to be proud of. So many proud families out there yeah. just in time for the holiday weekend. Absolutely. So a lot to celebrate. Shannon, thank you so much. We'll have the lit. On your mark, get set, go. Was the morning of race day, and all through the park, Celery was training its final race soon to embark. You see, Celery's retiring, hanging up his shoes. 449 straight losses dipped him in the wrong type of blues. But why does Celery never win? The answers are as such. It's a vegetable. Nobody really cares for vegetables that much. Being slow. Oh, it's all sticky down there. It's Canada Day. Oh, Celery gets stuck. Lack of will to win. And Celery, well, they're doing a little Irish dance there. Just general lack of talent. Celery, what are you doing? You're lost in space. Just, just generally not good at what he does. Hmm, maybe that's what it was. We set up an interview with one more race on the clock, but we didn't get much because this stock couldn't talk. Okay, whenever you're ready. 
Loyal fans will watch the last race with a tear in their eye. Aww. Despite all that losing. I'm really going to miss that guy. But don't get too upset. This isn't its last goodbye. You'll see it on game day, just not moving at a clip. Celery will be meeting with fans while walking with Buster and Chip. And there's been much debate over whether or not Celery will win in its final show. Some say it's got to. Others say it's simply just too slow. Reporting from Buffalo, Shannon Shepard, News 4 Sports.